Now he started to walk forward a little bit, but he still just get to, he just got to the dirt. Oh, I hit the ground. I thought it hit the ground. Here comes Charlie Manuel. He's going to come up the stairs. Delman said it hit the ground. Nope. And they they asked they asked Cedarstrom, and he said no. Maybe it didn't. They appealed. Sounded it, like it, it really hit the did. And McCann's initial reaction was that it hit the ground. Yeah. I thought he was looking for a new baseball. Sound like a double thump there. Sound like two sounds. Sound like the swing and then it, then it hit the ground. And Carapaz is saying, "Hey, I asked, I asked, and he said the same thing." So now Charlie's going to go argue with Gary sure. Cedarstrom. All right, take a look. And this ball hits oh the my. ground. Took a short hop. Yes, it did. Great job by McCann to catch it somehow on the show. I honestly think McCann was looking for a new baseball wheel. He was. He was. He knew it hit the ground. And that was really flagrant. It's hard to believe he could miss it by that much. You know, this is a 6 4 ball game. One base runner and the tying runs coming to the plate. Charlie has every right to argue it. It wasn't going to help. And now Carapaza is hearing it from the Phillies bench. Yeah, and he said, Well, uh, I asked. That's bad. That was a bad one. Because you could hear the sound. You could hear it click off the hit off the bat, and then you heard the thump on the ground. Well, this is a very competitive guy, and Charlie Emanuel. This has not been an easy uh, couple weeks for him to stomach. I mean, he's been through a lot during his big league career. He went through last year when the Phillies were well under 500 and came back and finished at the 500 mark. This is a little different, though. You see, some let him have his say after he threw him out. Seven infield hits this year, and he can bunt up the first base line. Ryan realizes that runs after him, and oh, he missed him. Greg Gibson is saying he missed him. And here comes Charlie Manuel. The home plate umpire too has a real good look at that if they want to look, talk about look, it. Chase, Chase is Chase is going over to the grass to say, "Look, he ran all the way over there. He's out of the baseline." Look at Scott Barry standing there as if to say, "You want to talk to me?" I you know, feel free. And that's all Charlie's saying right Look, now. There's too. the divot. Yeah, there's the divot. It's like go talk to the other guy. Uh, I believe the rule says three feet. He's allowed three feet outside the base line. I think he was more than three feet outside the base line. Don't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, we see what the divot is. Look at Chase. Chase is still pointing to the, the grass. And now Charlie's pointing to the grass. <laughs> Greg Gibson doesn't seem to mind. Were you saying at the point at the point where he avoided the tag and then maybe he made the divot after the tag. Yeah maybe. Now, all he wants him to do is ask the other guy. He's not going to ask him though. Well, that's a big play because it puts two runners on with nobody out here at the top of the eighth. Talking about Michael Bourne, what a great bunner he is, and with that speed, see Charlie Ryan Howard's trying to get to him. Now he misses him at that point, and there is where he makes the divot after yeah. he had gone by him, and I think that's what he was saying to him. He went around him. He was still on the baseline. Of course, Charlie got thrown out. You could hear the crowd roar there at the end, or I mean during that replay. And now Charlie's talking to Sam Holbrook, and he's probably saying the same thing to Sam Holbrook. Chase Utley's taking up the argument to, with Greg Gibson. The base path. Well, here you go, right here. At there, at that point, now he goes and his well, foot hits I guess the he's grass. Not three feet away from that tag right there. But here's there where he is. the divot comes up. I but he's know. already passed him. Yeah, he's passed. That's what I was saying. Right there is where Greg Gibson heard it up, and he threw Charlie out. Sam Holbrook. Heck of a way to pitch. Jimmy slow roller. This is going to be a tough play. No. Oh, he, moved, he missed the tag. Oh, they're saying he's out. He missed him. Ty Wigginton did not make that tag. At least it didn't look like it. But Larry Vanover calls him out. And here comes Charlie. Wheels, I think he missed him. It didn't look like he tagged him. I don't him. think he tagged him. And he didn't point. In, he that didn't say that. Base no. No, he, he missed him. I wonder if Charlie Relliford could help on that one. Well, they hardly ever ask. I no. doubt they will. He didn't tag him. Yeah, here it is. It looked like Jimmy made a heck of a move here, and he never touches him, does he? No. Nope. No, he just tags air. Not even close. Ooh, not even close. And Vanover never motioned that he ran out of the baseline. 
Larry's not going to ask for help either on that one. As though I, don't, I can't imagine Charlie Relaford will overturn it. Now when a guy's two, two inches, you know, five, ten feet away, and the other guy's 85 feet away, or 80 feet away, or whatever. Uh, Charlie's going to get thrown out from this game, I would think. I mean, he's following Van over now. Just said to him, what do you want? Okay. You got it. See, Van over said to him, what do you want? I now wonder, get his money's worth. See, here's the thing. I wonder. It's it's odd because he's so close to that play. How he didn't see it. He didn't see it. Now he's going to give Charlie Relaford an earful. That he's not available. Curveball. Did he go? Yes, he did. Schneider was looking for the ball, and Castro's going to wind up being safe. You think I wanted to block his ass? What the hell are you yelling at? Bob Davidson's yelling at the Phillies dugout because uh, I think the bench was telling him he's got to get out of the way. Uh oh. Uh oh, Charlie. There he goes. Well. Talking about Bill of the Cap to the Bill of the Cap. Yeah, Charlie yeah. is red hot. That's what they call Beacon. It. Yeah, when he runs out like that, he is really smoking. I haven't seen him this week no, in a long time. Now they got to calm him down. Wow. Bullshit. I mean, he is nose to nose with Bob Davidson. The reason he's heated is because he felt like Bob Davidson got in Brian Schneider's way. And then he didn't like he didn't like Davidson going over there and yelling at the dugout the way he was. Well, that's true. That's what got him going more than anything else. He knows Jerry Lane very well. They live near each other. That is a fair ball. Oh. oh. The runner's got to be out at second. Now they're saying no. Now, I know that the runner has to be given an, uh, an opportunity to go. But right there. Well, he's saying that he pushed. He's saying that he pushed Barmas. But Barmas is walking around and with the, the bat and everything yeah. like that. So the runner will be safe at second. They do get the out at, at first. It's going to go down as 2-6-3. So Walker's up at second base. Charlie Manuel's pointing to the same thing. He's saying he's in this area. Yeah. And normally when you see something like that, when the batter's in the way like that, the catcher gets the benefit of the doubt, I think. Right. He may go here just because. Well, there's a frustration level. He's following, following right now. Mark Carlson's home plate umpire, and he is kind of hanging back a little bit. Yeah, he's letting him, he's giving him the say. But they know umpires and player and managers know what will get them thrown out if they want to do it. Yeah, I think Charlie's saying that there was obstruction. Sure. Uh, but I think Carlson is saying that there wasn't, and that Kratz. The only reason there was obstruction because Kratz made contact right. to move him out of the way. Right, that's what he said. You know, it looked like he pushed and put his elbow yeah. out to push him, and I think that's was the initial. Oh, there he goes. Iasonia got him. Yeah, Dan Iasonia throws him out, and now he'll just sit and listen. Iasonia is the acting crew chief in place of Jerry Davis. Well, what's he doing in there anyway? He didn't need to come down here. Of course, I guess he's, he's the acting crew chief. He's going to come down to break it up. 
He's probably telling him that too. Like, what are you doing here? And Charlie is still. Charlie's still uh, letting him have it. I mean, it's not over the top. But he has been ejected from the ball game. Shirt. One, two. Way inside. And it's off the glove of McCann. Oh, and they're Larry saying it hit him. Larry Vanover is saying Dobbs, it hit him. Dobbs didn't know it hit him. And Bobby Cox is going to come out and ask Larry Vanover. Dobbs had no idea that he was at first. Couldn't believe that he was being awarded first base. He'll take it. Cox is out to argue with Vanover. And now they're asking uh -oh. for some help from the other umpires. So he calls in Jeff Kellogg, Angel Campos, Campos, and uh, Mark Carlson. And they're just to the left of home plate. Charlie pointing at the plate. And Charlie's raising the temperature a little bit. As he and Vanover discuss this, Vanover just nodding. Now in video, it's pretty clear to us. Charlie is really <laughs> fired up right now, and and there's not much Larry Vanover can do because he missed it. The only thing he says, you know what? I blew it. And, and the Charlie other guy is reversed. getting tossed. That again, as you pointed out, Larry, Charlie may have just sort of had. Had this in his mind, but um, something got now. Jeff Kellogg, crew chief, is going to come in and try to get between Charlie and Vanover. And by the way, Vanover had sent Blanton back to first base, which of course is not the proper right. move. It was a wild pitch, and so the other two umpires had gone ahead and moved Blanton back. Hit Montague, the home plate umpire just bolted towards the Phillies dugout. Says that Joe Blanton got in the way of Albert Pujols, interfered with him, and he couldn't make the play. And they award the double play to the Cardinals. Well, Charlie Manuel had set his piece to Andy Fletcher, and now has been ejected from the ball game because he came back out. Sarge, I, I don't think that was a good enough throw for Andy Fletcher to rule that. Now, I don't know what his explanation is. His explanation was interference, although the throw was already by him. It was him. by him. I, you know, and two ways you can look at that. You can look at it as Joe protecting himself, and you see Charlie still man uh, arguing, probably saying, "Hey, he was across the bag." But Joe did have an elbow that kind of came up at the end of the run. Yeah, but I, and I did see that. I agree with that. But the play had already, the ball had already gone by at that point. You I know think, what I'm saying? Um, the, um, yeah, I know what you're saying. But the umpire is probably looking at that whole play as it developed. Looking at the ball, looking at the arm. No, young and old, they support their manager here in Philadelphia. Time to run. Nope. He went. See, there's nobody there. I'm going to say no swing. I thought he went on that I'm one, too. Talking about Fletcher. That. 
that was, second base umpire. Yeah, that was a point I was just making at the top of the inning that that's going to come into play tonight. That there's nobody down there when there's a man on base. I think Sam Perlazzo and Charlie Manuel are both saying and saying something, and I think Charlie's just been thrown out of the ball game. Oh, man. that was a short fuse. Well, I, I wonder if it's a carryover even from the catch. Well, no, I, yeah, well, they were arguing the check swing. They want to know how. Hey, how can he call it from second? Well, that's what they got to do. And that was the point I was making in the, in the top of the inning that this could come into play at some point tonight, a little quicker than we thought. I think Charlie has an argument, and we're assuming it's Charlie that's been thrown out of the ball game. If not, he'd be thrown out now anyway because he's out arguing. Yeah. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's thrown out of the game. No, no I didn't know because because Sam Perlazzo was oh. arguing too, so yeah. I didn't know if it was somebody else that may have been ejected. Pence is 0 for two. In the air to right field. Peterson going back to the warning track to the wall. He leaps and it's off his glove. A fan may have interfered. Ha Howard is on his way to third. He'll be held up there. Pence is at second. And it's second and third with nobody outs. Ryan Peterson is saying a fan basically took that ball out of his glove. And the fans out of the outfield are saying that eh, should have been a home run. Well, here comes Jack McKeon. Well, let's see exactly what happened as he goes up. I got to tell you, that's pretty close to really being almost interference as he goes up. Let's take another look at it. See where the hands are. Oh, yeah, the fans definitely reached over. Well, the, you can see the red cap actually hit the ball. Yo, Hunter Pence gets punished. Well, here you go, Sarge. This is part of what you were yep. saying. How do they know Peterson was going to catch it? Well, they don't know, but what they're doing is they're assuming, and all they're doing is looking at the fielder where you have the glove that's impeding on the playing field. And that's the way that Joe West is interpreting this play. Here it is again. Take a look at it. The fans are definitely over the yellow line. The hat and the bare hand right there. It stops the glove from opening. Right. Well, I thought he had it open and he was actually closing it when we looked there. I know in that particular instance there, he's not going to catch that ball. Period. From where that is and the way that the glove closed, he's not going to catch that ball. And Charlie Manuel's been thrown out of this ball game. Joe West is saying, oh, I'm not going to listen to this anymore. I don't know what Charlie's saying. I don't know if he's saying that you can't assume the ball would have been caught or can you call if you didn't call interference right away can you use instant replay to call interference. Right. Well they did. Yeah. Okay. And not only that though on this particular play for me umpires went out far enough to even be able to see that with the naked eye and there's your instant replay right there. So when you have them. You're going to have plays that are going to be changed. And Charlie is probably saying, you're supposed to be checking to see if the ball went out of the ballpark. Correct. Not whether or Correct. not, you know, it's interference with a fan there. And that's Charlie's speed. I'm coming straight to your face. 